This is not a rose in a normal sense of a rose. Hi guys, it's Archie Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Oh gosh, I have so wanted to do a Ghislaine G G G G review for a really long time. I have so many beautiful samples that were gifted to me by a lovely subscriber of mine, Peter, and I want to just kind of go through them because Ghislaine are one of the best houses ever and one that I love reviewing. So today I wanted to review for you Rose Barbar. Rose Barbar. It's Barbarian Rose, a rose that's going to come and attack you when you just least expect it. So when Guillain renovated their flagship store on the Champs-Élysées in 2005, they created three fragrances with three really famous noses to celebrate that fact. And they started this new line called La, uh, La, La Art et la Matière. It's the art and the material, material referencing the raw material. And there were three at the time, there's now 11, so they have added more. But this one came out with Kier Beluga and one called Angelique Noir, which I've never smelled. I think I may have a sample, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm swimming in samples, guys. And Rose has always been a favourite raw material or note of Guillain as a house, so they created this one. Now, this is totally not what I expected when I think of Guillain and I think of Roses. This thing is edgy and weird and uh, I don't know. I've tested it out a lot of times. I have these beautiful, almost four mil samples that they come in. I love them. You can really get to grips with the fragrance. So I want to review it, so I'm gonna. Yeah. They say that this can be worn by men. They say this is a rose that men can wear. It came out in 2005 and it's essentially a Sheepra fragrance. But I'm thinking, can't all roses be worn by men? You just take the sprayer and you just go, and then voila, you're wearing it. I just think Rose has a stigma attached as being a feminine thing, but let's break those boundaries, people. I mean, it's 2000 and whatever year it is right now. So the top notes are aldehydes and Bulgarian Rose, and the heart notes are Turkish Rose and Fenugreek. Oh my gosh, Fenugreek is one of the trickiest notes I've ever come across in fragrance, as well as honey. But a lot of people talk about cumin as being this note of death, but let me tell you, fenugreek is much more tricky than cumin. It's really, really weird. And the base notes are peach honey, patchouli, and then they say forest floor. Um, I'm guessing that's oak moss, because it's a sheepra. Oak moss is present in pretty much all sheepras. So yeah, what does it smell like? Man. What would you expect from an exclusive, pretty Guerlain rose? Oh, well, pretty, there you go, I said it in my head. I would expect something like that. This takes you on a completely different journey from whatever you might be expecting. So the first thing to mention is, you gotta like aldehydes if you, if you wanna like this fragrance. This fragrance features two types of roses. I think they focus more on the Turkish rose because they say it's about the Ottoman rose, which is Turkish rose, much sweeter than Bulgarian rose. Bulgarian roses, to my nose, smell more metallic. Turkish roses smell more sweet. The further south the rose grows, the sweeter the aroma. Top tip. But wow, they have placed aldehydes in here right at the forefront. And the aldehydes in here are the type of aldehydes which, to me, make things smell muddy. There are a lot of aldehydes out there. There are aldehydes that smell like strawberries. There are aldehydes that smell like peach. There are aldehydes that smell like laundry. There is all different kinds. This is the classic aldehyde note that is present in Dior's June, that's present in one of my most favourite fragrances ever, which is Dolce & Gabbana's Red Cap. It's that aldehyde that I describe as, and this is going to sound really horrible, but I'm going to say it, that smells a little bit like dirty hair. Yeah, gross, I know, but that's what it gives me. The aldehydes overshadow the rose. I can feel the rose, but the rose in here is not one of a pretty, fluffy, or jammy type feeling. It's actually quite a juicy one, but the aldehydes overshadow it so much that it's in the background, which makes it, to me, feel like a floral aldehyde as opposed to a sheepra entirely. So the aldehydes really muddy up the rose. This isn't anything elegant, I wouldn't say. It's got an edge. 
This is an edgy rose fragrance that was completely unexpected from my expectations. Don't expect things too much, Tom. I tell myself that all the time, but you just can't help it. It's human nature. There's a couple of other things in this fragrance that are contributing to the fact that it smells just that little bit edgy and dirty, and it's fenugreek and this peach honey. I wouldn't say that it <clears throat> feels super honey-like, but there's an element of honey in here, and it's not the sweet, pretty floral element, it's the kind of the dirtier, edgier side of honey in fragrances. Paired together with this massive aldehyde and fenugreek, just make it feel like a rose that's kind of trodden into a puddle kind of smell. Yeah. Not painting a good picture here, am I? But I like the fact that Guerlain have gone, Guerlain, sorry, have gone way outside of just making a really pretty rose. They've made something super, I would say weird and not their usual style, which is why I chose to review it because it kind of stands out. There is an element of spice to it. Uh, fenugreek is a spice, but it's not, it's more kind of planty sort of feeling. I don't know, it's a weird one to describe, but there is an element of spice, of chypra spice to it underlying, but mainly it's just aldehyde tastic with the rose in the background. As it starts to develop, there is a little bit of a change. Aldehyde's always present, that goes without saying. They are there the whole time, but it's almost like the aldehydes go through a development on their own within the fragrance, like a dream within a dream. And they do start to reveal a cleaner, sparklier character. I just haven't smelled a fragrance before with this amount of aldehydes in it. It's normally a background or an accent or a feeling or something like that, but this is like, no, we are gonna showcase a massive amount of that note and you're gonna love it. So it does go into this kind of slightly laundry sparkly territory and that's where it becomes the pretty rose that I did expect but this is way in, this is way into wearing, this isn't near the beginning or even midway, this is when it's dry. It's dry here and it's much sparklier and cleaner here, it's lighter and the overall feeling of it is close. This is by no means a projecting fragrance. It's not one that can fill a room. It's on the lighter side, although it does have those rougher elements. It's not a chypra where it's jumping off of your skin and giving you darkness. It's just relatively just in this area right here. Mm. The oak mossy or forest floor notes that they mention for me, don't really reveal themselves that much at all. Oak moss is a really prominent note. It's the main thing in a sheepra, but I don't necessarily get that. Like I said before, it's rose aldehyde with a few other things. So I did expect it to be drier. I did expect it to be more mossy, a little bit more green, because sheepras are essentially green a lot of the time, depending on which type of sheepra it is. But this looks like it's going for a classic sheepra. Um, but yeah. That's, that's that. It's a baffling conundrum. Longevity. Not the best. Not gonna lie. I can't lie to you guys. It's not the best. The projection, you can deal with if it's not the best because some fragrances aren't meant to project in that way. But longevity of this, I get about four hours, which I don't think is that good. Well, actually, I'm just gonna be honest. It's not good. You don't want to because this fragrance isn't that cheap, I don't think. It was an exclusive thing for a time, and now it's, yeah, kind of not lasting very long on my skin at all, and I've tipped quite a lot of this onto myself at a time. So yeah, it gets a little bit of a thumbs down for me from that, but yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. I hope this was a little bit of an insight into one of these La Art et la Matière fragrances from Guerlain. Anyway guys, I'm Axel Monogue, hit my logo down there to subscribe and I want to review more of these. I want to do more, I want to get to know these Guerlain fragrances that I've never even smelled before. So anyway, I hope you liked it, I'll speak to you guys soon. Goodbye.